Uh, Gary Lineker is stepping back from his duties as Match of the Day presenter, according to the BBC in an official statement. Lineker will not present the show until an agreement is reached on social media use. It comes after the presenter said yesterday that he would be presenting Match of the Day tomorrow, as usual, after several days of intense criticism over his Twitter posts about the government's asylum seeker policy. A tweet from Lineker had suggested he was not reprimanded by the BBC for his comments about the small boats policy, despite criticism from some politicians. So is this the right decision? Let's get reaction now. Uh, former e uh, Wales international, uh, Premier League star Hal robson Carnu. Hi, Hal. I'm not very good. I'm really well. Great to have you on the show. Uh, what do you think of Gary Lineker's comments, in particular referencing Germany and the Second World War in relation to this uh, migrants policy? Yeah, I think obviously in terms of Gary Lineker's comments, I think they, they're obviously being taken in, in the sense of, you know, the, how they've come across. You know, when you're referencing, um, you know, Germany in, in its past, it's always going to be a very difficult and, of course, sensitive mm -hmm. subject. But I think, you know, diving deeper into it, you want to be asking the questions as to you know, why did Gary Lineker say what he said? And I think when you look at the support which has come out in, in favour of Gary, Gary Lineker, when you look at the likes of Ian Wright, Alan Shearer, Jermaine Genus, and even the infamous Piers Morgan, all supporting Gary Lineker and what he has said and his position, I think fundamentally what we're seeing here is a support of free speech. And, you know, BBC's comments around the, the, the need to uh, not censor, um, but agree what Gary Lineker can or cannot post on social media ultimately is, you know, bordering free speech rights because Ultimately, Gary Lineker is, is an individual, he's a human being, and if he chooses to link wartime Nazi Germany to a decision made by the current government, then I think the question needs to be why, you know, and dive deeper into understanding, you know, why is this such a uh, significant topic for Gary Lineker to make such a link? And I think that's ultimately what's been missed. I think now, obviously, with the fraud, which has kicked off, when you look, you know, he, he's not going to be presenting match of the day tomorrow. You know, who's going to stand in for Gary Lineker? I think this is going to be a pivotal moment in match of the day, a pivotal moment in, in the BBC's, you know, streaming of, of, of and broadcasting of football. And, you know, ultimately, I think it, it shows the significance that not only uh, free speech and government, but also what we see in terms of the support and, and, and across the, the globe in terms of individual free speech rights. Of course. I mean, Hal, the issue is that uh, he is perhaps the face of the BBC, its best paid star. He's the presenter of Match of the Day. Uh, is it helpful for the organisation, for the Beeb, the, the national state broadcaster, which is paid for from a tax, the, the licence fee, is it helpful for him to take a view on such a divisive issue? Yeah, so, so that's the question. You know, should, should he have a political position? I think that's, that's what your, your mm. question is ultimately. Yeah. And, you know, it, as we said before, do we have free speech or not? Regardless of who you're working for, what your association is, surely there should be an element of being able to speak what is on your mind, you know, talking about what's right or wrong whether that's right or wrong in the grand scheme of things or whether that's what you feel is right or wrong. As I said before, I think actually being able to communicate that and understand why someone is taking that position is the most important aspect. And I think that's fundamentally what's been missed here. So, yeah, I think, you know, it, as I said, it's, it's certainly a pivotal time. Um, it, it's, it's a difficult time as well uh, when it comes to, to BBC's broadcasting. You know, as I said, the likes of, you know, big names coming out in support of Gary Lineker uh, and against the decision that the BBC have made. And ultimately, I think, you know, it, it opens up the need for open debate, open discussion and the ability to have a have an open and transparent platform. Again, you know, you said beforehand, you know, you, you wrote out that speech in terms of what, what Gary Lineker, his position before he was 
ultimately removed from, from, from his position at the BBC, whether it's in the interim or, or the long term. He was very much thinking that he was going to be in that position and he was going to present match of the day. And it's only of, that we've recently found out that he was asked to step back. And again, you know, I think that's not necessarily very open. You know, if BBC are asking Gary Lineker to step back, they should be open about it. And I think, uh, again, it, it, it dives into to deeper questions. Uh, indeed. Uh, you're clearly an excellent broadcaster, a great communicator, as well as a great footballer, Hal. Would you consider stepping in and hosting the show tomorrow night? <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm not currently qualified as a presenter. So uh, regardless if I wanted to or not, I don't think I would, uh, I, I would have to remit to do so. But th there's going to be a number of presenters who certainly will, will turn down this, this opportunity. Um, and again, wh whether it's through solidarity, whether it's through the support of free speech, um, you know, I, th I think, as I said, it, it's... Uh, it's unprecedented in BBC terms, certainly, um, particularly from 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 a football footballing broadcasting perspective. But look, I think it's a a topic which is certainly a sensitive topic, but one which, for me, I feel needs to be discussed at a deeper level. Again, we're talking about politics. We're talking about you know the right wing's position in terms of being able to remove someone like Gary Lineker. We're then talking about you know the left wing's position. Well, actually, you know, are are, are both wings the same wings of, of of the same bird? You know, I think there needs to be open discussion and 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 actually a, a, a level playing field drawn. Although, how um, look, you've had a very distinguished career as a player, international uh, international player, of course. Uh, 46 caps for Wales in the senior squad, four in the under-21s. Uh, Reading, West Brom, Arsenal. Um, it's been a great career and you've entertained many thousands of fans. Um, do football fans really want all of this politics? Do they want to debate the migrant crisis or rainbow flags, rainbow armbands and taking the knee? Um, is there a place for politics in football or do people just want to enjoy the game? It's a great question. Look, I think fans, supporters around the world, they're, they're, they're supporters. You know, they're, they're not supporting politics. They're not supporting, mm. you know, various different parties. They are supporting the game. And so, of course, when it comes to match of the day, you know, whether it's match of the day, Sky Sports, you know, ITV's coverage, whatever it is, they're tuning in to watch the beautiful game of football. Now, again, the correlation between football and politics, is there one? You know, one could debate there isn't. And actually, you know, the fact that Gary Lineker's position is such as whatever it is, again, we're talking about free speech, free rights, an open and honest area where you can have a position regardless of, you know, your stance, etc. cetera. Um, can, can, should that mean that he's relinquished of his role in terms of presenting to millions of people on a weekly basis, the, the beautiful game which they're tuning in to watch. You know, I think one could debate that actually he probably should still have 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 the role and still be 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 presenting. So, as I said, look, I think there, there's a lot of people who will have differing views. Again, it, it, it's it's all about you know what we see here is is ultimately division. You know, uh, it, it's it's division. It's you know opposite sides. It's creating controversy and. All that does is, you know, stir, stir the pot, entertain, you know, people will tune in to watch that, uh, you know, we'll get the views, we'll, we'll get the hits. But actually, you know, uh, is, is that solving anything? Is, is, is anything coming of it? You know, who, who's, 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 uh, who's to say it is? Hal, what a treat to have you on the show. Uh, a very, very uh, interesting uh, set of views. And uh, I'll definitely reflect on those. And I'll ask my viewers to respond, Mark, at gbnews.uk. Um, I mentioned all the teams you've played for. Um, a fantastic number of appearances for West Brom, 143 between 2016 and 2021. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, would you like one more, one more uh, opportunity in football? No, I'm, uh, I, I founded a company called The Tourmic Co in 2018, and we're delivering health-based uh, functional turmeric shots to people in all different walks of life. Wow. Uh, we're partnered, partners with over 40 elite sports teams. 
but also, you know, subscribers of, you know, grandparents, parents, and, you know, uh, uh, teenagers as well. So that's my focus. I'm CEO of the company. I run that company and, and we're privileged to be making a positive difference in society through nutrition uh, in the form of our functional turmeric based shots. Uh, well, listen, I'm, I'm all over that because uh, turmeric is, is a really great little herb, isn't it? It's anti-inflammatory. It's great for health. It is indeed, yeah, and, and it's been used for, for millennia in ancient parts of the world. And what we've done is created a convenient solution, uh, wow. which is changing people's lives for the better. You know, we've had over 10,000 positive customer reviews of the product really changing people's lives, whether that's through increased energy, whether it's through reducing arthritis, or whether it's through pain relief and the reduction of inflammation. However, it is a food, it's not a medicine, uh, but we're firm believers that, you know, uh, food can be our medicine. And, and, you know, certainly what we put into our bodies does have an impact on health. And when you look at society, when you look at, you know, the ailments around the world, we've never had more levels of, uh, high levels of heart disease, high levels of obesity. Right. And when you look at our, you know, food industry, when you look at the highly processed foods that are offered to young people, processed foods, fast foods, high fat, high sugar foods, there's a reason why we're experiencing the levels of disease that we are today. One in four kids leave primary school obese, and there's a reason for that. So you look, we're, we're looking to make a positive change on society through functional natural nutrition. Well, well, I'm really glad that I asked. This is the Turmeric Co., yeah? Correct, yes. Yeah, there, there you go. The Turmeric.co, check out their website. Um, it's not quackery, folks. Uh, turmeric really is good for you. And uh, if Hal's anything to go by, then he's a perfect advert for it. Hal, we'll catch up soon. Thank you for helping us tackle those challenging issues. Hal robson Carnu, former Wales International, right. former West Brom star as well, uh, Reading and Arsenal. No one's perfect. Uh, thanks, Hal. <laughs> catch up soon.